In a previous video, I outlined the options that a player had for taking relief from a water hazard, designated by yellow stakes and or lines. Now I'm going to explain two additional options that a player has if their ball lies within the margins of a lateral water hazard, which are designated by red stakes and or lines. But what is a lateral water hazard? It's a water hazard, or that part of a water hazard, so situated that it isn't possible, or the committee deems that it would be impracticable, to drop a ball behind the water hazard in accordance with Rule 26.1b. So, in my par 3 layout here, I have a lateral water hazard that borders the course. So, uh, the boundary of the course is the other side of the water hazard, and therefore it has to be designated as a lateral water hazard, because it's not possible for a player to drop a ball on a line from the flag stick through where their ball crosses the margin of the hazard because they would be off the course. If we take an example of a player that plays, slices his ball into the water, and we'll assume that the ball is deep in the water, the ball can't be played. So the player has two options. He can play his third stroke, having taken the penalty at one stroke, from the teeing ground towards the green. Or he can go down to where his ball last crossed the margin of the lateral water hazard and drop a ball within two club lengths of that point, not nearer the hole. We're assuming here that the magnet is a diameter of two club lengths. So the player can drop a ball anywhere within two club lengths of where his ball last crossed the margin, not nearer the hole. If we go to the other side of the course, we can see that there's a lateral water hazard, or a ditch, running the length of the hole. And in this case, if the player plays his tee shot and crosses the margin at this point here, he can play out of the ditch, providing he doesn't ground his club. But if he decides that that's not practical, he can't drop a ball from the flag stick through the point where it crossed here, because that line would be into this forest of trees that I, I've identified here. So the best option for him is probably going to be to drop a ball within two club lengths, not nearer the hole, of the point where his ball last crossed the margin of the hazard. And he has one further option in this case, in that he may go over to the other side of the lateral water hazard, taking a point that's equidistant from the flag strip from this point where his ball last crossed the margin. So he can drop a ball within two club lengths of this point, which is equidistant from the flag stick. So remember, Rule 26-1 gives you two options for taking relief from a water hazard and two additional options for taking relief from a lateral water hazard. I'm Barry Rhodes for Andy Brown and GolfSwingSecretsRevealed.com Why not check out my own website at www.barryrhodes.com and enjoy your golf more by understanding the rules better. Cheerio.